Hey Rambors, this video covers chapter 3.5 in our textbook and deals with the trigonometric functions. So we're going to look at the graph of sine and see if we can determine what the derivative of sine might be just from, just from guessing from the graph. We'll also look at the graph of cosine and try and do the same thing. And then we will algebraically de uh, derive the derivative of tangent. So by the end of the video, you should know the derivative of sine, cosine, and tangent. Then we'll practice a few problems so that you get some practice, especially using those derivative formulas with the chain rule. Okay, Ramblers, thanks for watching, pause often, and take good notes. When we're talking about the derivative of sine, of cosine, and of tangent, it's especially important to remember that all of these are when the uh, x is measured in radians, not in degrees. If we use degrees, then the, uh, the derivatives, of course, still exist, but they're much messier. So whenever we're working in this book or in any other uh, calculus class, you want to use radians when we're working with trigonometry. So set your calculator radians, and all of your work should be done in radian measure. Okay, well, let's derive or at least look at the graph of sine to, to see if we can determine what the derivative of sine would be. If you recall back to when we were sketching gra uh, graphs of derivatives from the original function, we could have taken a function like this and tried to sketch the derivative. Well, we know that between negative 2 pi and negative pi, it reached a maximum, so the derivative would have been 0 there. And then if we put a 0 at the next minimum <clears throat> and continued this past all these minimums and maximums, and then we consider that the function was um, increasing, and then it was decreasing in this interval between the next zeros. Then around um, the uh, y-axis, it was increasing again, and then decreasing, and then it was increasing again, decreasing. And you can see that it's oscillating in a fashion very similar to sine. Well, if we had a better graph, you, you would be able to calculate the actual slopes, but I'll just have to tell you here, for this uh, purpose of simplicity, that the slope reaches a maximum between the zeros of positive 1 and a minimum of negative 1. So if we were to go through and sketch all these, why don't you take a minute and pause the video and see if you can't figure out what this graph would be. All right, as we connect them, you may see a graph that's familiar to you from last year in pre-calc. If you connect all those dots, that graph of the derivative becomes, is clearly cosine. So our first formula is that the derivative of sine is cosine. That's a really important um, derivative, so let's be sure that we get that in our notes. And let's move on to cosine. We're going to go through a similar exercise to when we tried to figure out the formula for the derivative of sine just a minute ago. Let's look at the graph of the function cosine here on top. And below it is, is the graph of the derivative of cosine. And is it possible to kind of figure out what the formula is for this graph if we, you know, just by what we can recognize in our knowledge from pre-calculus. Well, of course, we see that, not surprisingly, the function has a zero everywhere that cosine has a maximum or a minimum. And the function decreases where, I'm sorry, the derivative is negative where cosine is decreasing and positive where cosine is increasing. But what is this function? Now, we know that sine would look something like this. Because wouldn't it be nice if the derivative of cosine was just sine? But it's not, because sine would be reflected over the x-axis. So this is clearly a reflection of sine. So we say that the derivative of cosine is minus sine, or negative sine x. That's another really important formula to have in your notes. Now let's take a look at the derivative of tangent. 
To find the derivative of tangent, we're going to take a different approach than we did for finding the derivative of sine and cosine. The derivative of tangent is going to be found using a, um, an identity from pre-calc, because we know that tangent is just the quotient of sine over cosine. And we know the quotient rule. So this is going to equal low d high. Now we know the derivative of sine now. It's just cosine minus high d low, which is just sine x times the derivative of cosine, which is minus sine, all over the square of what's below. Now, if we simplify the top, we get cosine of x squared, and then the two minus signs become a plus sign, so we get plus sine x squared over cosine x squared. Now don't break my heart and cross out those cosine squared of x because the top is going to simplify through the Pythagorean theorem to just be 1 over cosine x squared. Now, relying on another identity, I know that this equals secant squared because 1 over cosine is secant. So the derivative of tan x is just secant squared x. And that is another important formula to have in your notes. Okay, let's review and summarize all these and then practice a couple. Now this is a little bit of a review from, from this video. So the derivative, again, when x is in radians, the derivative of sine is just cosine. The derivative of cosine is minus sine, or negative sine x. Keep those two straight. Now, of course, if that x inside the parentheses is not just an x, but another function, we have to use the chain rule. And that will come out being the, for instance, the derivative of sine of kx would equal the derivative of the outside, which would be cosine of kx, times the derivative of the inside, which would be k, meaning that this would end up being simplified to k cosine of kx. So for this second block of formulas, I don't care whether you just use the chain rule every time you come across it, or whether you memorize it like this. Okay, let's take a look at cosine. I'm sorry, let's take a look at tangent and review that. Okay, the derivative of tangent is just going to be 1 over cosine of x squared, or I see it more commonly as secant of x squared. Now remember, secant of x squared equals the same as that. Those are two ways of expressing the same thing. It's more common to write it like that but I can understand while you're still learning that you, you want to kind of keep it like this, especially in terms of the chain rule. But try to work up to expressing it um, like the big boys do uh, with the, the exponent af before the x. Okay, Ramblers, let's uh, try a couple, and I'm going to ask you to upload to Zaption, and then uh, we'll wrap it up. Okay, let's find the derivative of sine of t, oh, I'm sorry, we should write this, this variable down here and the variable in the function have to match. So let's write d dt of sine of t squared. Um, respond on Zaption to that. Okay, so for this one, we're going to need the chain rule. So we'll take the derivative of the outside, or because t is inside sine, so that's going to be cosine of t squared now we'll multiply by the derivative of, of t squared, which is just 2t. Now you may want to simplify that to 2t cosine t squared. Okay, let's take, another, take a look at another one. What will be the derivative of 5 cosine 2t? Okay, this is going to have the constant multiple rule and the chain rule because that inside function is not just t, it's 2t. Okay, 
So we're going to take 5 out in front, and we're going to multiply by the sine of 2t, because that's kind of the outside function, times the derivative of 2t, which is just 2. So that becomes 10 sine of 2t. Okay, last one, and then we'll wrap up. What would we take for the derivative here of t times sine of t? Now be careful, because we have a product here, and we have to use a special formula for that. So we'll answer that on Zaption, and we'll come back for the answer. Okay, since this is a product, we have to apply the product rule. So it's the derivative of the first times the second, plus the first times the derivative of the second, which is just cosine of t. So this answer is just sine t plus t cosine t. Okay, Ramblers, um, make sure you have these three uh, formulas down for sine, cosine, and tangent. And uh, thanks for watching.